Jerome JT62. Welcome back. This is part two of the dust shoe build for the fine line automation 4x4 router. Starting to get things set up here. We'll just look at a few test cuts here and there as we're going through and cutting this. I'm cutting it at 30 feet per minute, 17,000 RPM, and I am going to be using the air blast on this for the tool. Uh, right through here, turn that on, we can see how that works. And turn that off if I don't want to use it. And it will come on automatically. That switches on once the spindle turns on and will shut off when the spindle shuts off if you're going to run it continuous. So we're going to go ahead and get the tool zeroed out. I'm going to cut the bottom first. The reason why is because uh, this was scrap and this is going to be cut out of the center here so there just be a little section but it's going to be facing the bottom so uh, I'm not going to worry about it. But I wanted to make this piece for the bottom so you're not going to see it anyway if, if something does show through. I got the z-axis on this machine dialed in to virtually perfect from what I can see with my dial indicator so I'm actually going to have to peel that plastic back when I use this maker's guide to do the tool zero or it'll count for that material um, it won't cut all the way through like it's supposed to so I'm going to go ahead and peel that back and we'll get up that this zeroed out I just used max grip carpet tape to hold this to the MDF I still don't have my hold down tracks done so I'm using these typical clamps to hold the spoil board down and then that's just tape to that. So we'll go ahead and get this zeroed out, get it started, get a little bit of footage on it, look at the final part when it's cut out, talk about it. Be right back. So it's show time here. Uh, got everything all zeroed out and Set up in Mach 3 here. Just as a side note, I found it very beneficial to use air blast or something to clear the chips out when you're cutting any kind of plastics, acrylics, polycarbonates, or anything like that. Because if you don't, uh, the chips that are left in there, um, they're going to weld in there and give you some bad edges. Uh, also, uh, I see a lot of the bits are uh, down cut. I like to use up cut to pull the bits and chips out and then blow them out with the uh, air blast here. And this is also a coolant thing. I haven't made a tank for it, but you can actually run coolant through it if you're cutting metal. But um, we're going to go ahead and get this started up and get a little bit of footage on it. Time to build up the RPM. I have it set to a 25 second delay.
track right now. Well, we got everything cut out here. We've got to do a little clean up here. We'll get this part out. Get the protection film pulled off. Get a look at it. Why do you need a dust shoe? That's why. So, we'll move on from here. Take a look at this part and then get the rest of them cut out. So here's the uh, finished product for this bottom section and I don't know if you can catch that but that scratch right in there yeah it's gonna show through I'm not gonna worry about it it's gonna be upside down this did leave some material in here just a slight amount and I had to cut that out of there uh, I should probably increase my cutting speed slightly maybe I'll bump that up to about 40 feet per minute um, but other than that the sides came out pretty good all in all uh, pretty good job on this if I really wanted to get asinine about that I guess I can polish those up probably won't I didn't pull the bottom off yet but from this side it's going to be tapped get the brush installed in here hopefully it's going to be a snug fit at least it was with MDF hopefully that's going to be the same thing here so get those other pieces finished up look at all of them move on well, here's all the parts cut out uh, just finish that up. This is the top. You can see the magnet holes there. Here's the spacer and the bottom for the brush. This is a brush I intend on using here. Um, kind of thinking I may end up using a three inch. I really don't want to Put another spacer in but just in the interest of letting you see what that looks like this would be here you can add a spacer spacer and 10 of them if you want I suppose and then the top here um, fits on like that so that's the thickness of this if I had four pieces in at this point I don't plan on using that I may just get another brush a longer one we'll have to see how the two and a quarter how far away from the bit it may be a little bit too far away so polycarbonate is pretty heavy so uh, highly impact resistant and it's flexible way more flexible than acrylic so that's why I chose it and not only that but I got a good deal on the scrap bin um, from tap this tab back here uh, what's left I need to cut a slot in here all the way up for the punch bolt which is going to be right in here I'm going to use I decided 832 hardware for this the spacer will be drilled through so the bolt can slide through for any spacer and then this will be tapped here so you just screw these together you can remove or add spacers uh, as you deem necessary if, if, if you needed to do that the magnets um, I'm hoping these are big enough I'm going to stack two per hole um, they're pretty powerful Everybody knows about these neodymium magnets and uh, pretty much the standard nowadays. 
Nobody uses that old iron stuff anymore, but I think that's going to be enough to hold that in. Um, we'll see how it works out. I, I don't think I'm going to have any issues with that. So, go ahead and get this cut out. And just incidentally, you're going to drill a pinch bolt or a hole through here. You want to drill a hole before you cut your slot. You cut the slot first, then when you go down to drill these in, this, one of these sides is going to pinch down and move in. And it's going to put your hole off like this. You can see what, I, what I'm talking about. So as you're drilling through, it's going to push one side closer. Not unless you put a spacer in here, and I don't want to have to deal with that. Um, so do a pinch bolt, make sure you drill your hole first, and then make your cut. So we'll go ahead and get that done. Come back, take a look at it. So we're back. Um, here it is, everything complete. I ended up recutting this top um, those magnets I were using were too small so I bought three I want to say three eighths they weren't strong enough they were too thin and I had these half quarters on order um, so I ended up re-drilling this out by hand to get these uh, stronger magnets in. It just it, it wasn't holding enough for my taste. And also, um, when I recut this, I went ahead and used the eighth inch bit and cut this slit all the way through, minus an eighth inch. And then uh, once I made my drill. Uh, for the bolt through here, and then I went ahead and uh, cut that out, just filed it out a little bit. Here's the brush installed. Um, seems like everything I said I was going to do, I ended up going opposite, but I ended up putting the three inch brush on here. The other one I think was going to be too short. And if you look in here, I have this amount of space. From the bottom it gives me about an inch so that I can slide this up or down depending on what uh, length bit I use whether it's an eighth inch or I'm using a quarter it's longer than that uh, this may not I think it's gonna be enough but uh, we'll have to see but basically probably for everything I'm gonna be using this is gonna be enough the three inch brush was a lot easier to install than the uh, two and a quarter. The two and a quarter was like a bear to get in. And it, it wanted to roll out in a direction this way and just way too much space. Um, but you don't want the, this brush to be straight up and down. You want it to be slightly out at an angle, out an off angle. This is still dry in here. I ended up using um, silicone adhesive to hold that in there and it's holding really tight I don't think it's gonna go anywhere but anyway when the spindle pushes down on this uh, you want this to come out like this and not just go haywire and some in some out pushing into the bit so you're gonna want this brush to be angled out slightly or at least that's what I think so and I couldn't get it exactly perpendicular to that anyway so um, it makes it makes more sense so let me mount the spindle side and then I'll just clip that up real quick and we'll be right back So I went ahead and threw the spindle side on. Um, I ended up using um, 1032, or actually 1024, 1032, if 
you wanted to go the fine thread route, but uh, 1024 and a wing nut on that side. Doesn't take much force to pinch that down and hold it. And then, obviously, this brush just goes up here like that and holds up there. The benefit to this um, is that this can't slide laterally to the side once the vacuum hose is in and this is up against the spindle. Once this is up against the spindle, it's tight. It can only be pulled down with that force and those half inch magnets are very difficult to, uh, that brush isn't going to go anywhere when this is operating. So that actually worked out pretty nice. So there's a shot of the whole assembly all done. The next thing I have to do is uh, I have an idea on um, how I want to attach the vacuum hose so that it comes straight down here and it's not moving off to the side this way and that way. So for the brush side of this, this uh, wraps that up. I'll post another video on the vacuum hose holder. Um, the idea that I came up with for that, I think it's going to work out really nice. And uh, we'll close this one out. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Let me know. And once again, please like. Comment, subscribe. And once again, as always, thanks for watching.